Hello, Holiday Heroes. Welcome back to World Traveler Wednesday with Miss Rosie. Today, I'm very excited about where we are traveling to because it is one of my favorite countries that I've ever been to. And it's sunny and tropical and warm like our last country. And as we all know, living here in Oregon, we could use a little more of that right about now. So today we are traveling to Greece. Before we fly in, here are a few fun facts about the country of Greece. Greece is slightly smaller in size than the state of Alabama. Greece has one of the longest coastlines in the entire world and the longest coastline in the Mediterranean with 8,498 miles. Greece is the third largest olive oil producer in the world, just after Italy and Spain. While many consider Friday the 13th a day of bad luck, for Greeks it is Tuesday the 13th. Greece is a country in Southeastern Europe. The country is located on the Balkan Peninsula. It borders Albania, the Republic of Macedonia, and Bulgaria to the north and Turkey to the east. The Aegean Sea is to the east and south of mainland Greece, the Ionian Sea to the, is to the west. Both are a part of the Eastern Mediterranean Sea and have many islands. The country consists of the mainland with two peninsulas, the Peloponnese in the southwest and the Halkidini in the northeast. Greece also includes an archipelago of about 6,000 islands with Crete being the largest island. The most well-known Greek islands are, the first is Santorini. It's very well known for its white and blue buildings and just picture perfect landscape. The second is Mykonos, which is the only island I've been to, but I loved it. And these are the pictures that I took while I was there. Third is Crete and the largest, as I was just saying. Fourth is Naxos. And fifth is Paros. The capital of Greece is Athens, which as of 2021 has 3,153,000 people living there. Athens is known as the oldest capital city in Europe and is named after Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom. The city of Athens was the birthplace of Western civilization and still one of Europe's great cities. In ancient times, it was the most important Greek city-state. Today, it is the capital and center of commerce and industry of Greece. Greece is very mountainous with mountains covering 80% of the country. The highest mountain is Mount Olympus, which is pictured here to the right at 9,570 feet and is located in Thessaly. There are several mountain ranges which tend to run in a northwest to southwest direction. The two major mountain ranges are the Pindus and the Taurus Mountains. The most important are the Pindus Mountains, which form the backbone of the Greek mainland, dividing Epirus and from Thessaly. These mountains reappear in the south on the large peninsula of the Peloponnesus, where they divide into several smaller ranges. One of these ranges vanishes under the sea, but appears again in the east as the mountains of the islands of Crete, Carpathus, and Rhodes. The islands make up about 20% of the total area of Greece. They form complex patterns that generally follow the trends of the mainland mountain ranges. The rivers of Greece have a complex pattern, as I was just saying. The northern rivers, the Axios, Stroma, Nestos, and Martista, rise in the mountains of Bulgaria and the Republic of North Macedonia. These rivers flow only a short distance on Greek territory until they reach the Aegean Sea. The longest river in Greece is the Halicomon. It begins in the Pindus Mountains and flows eastward for 185 miles to the Aegean Sea. The two major rivers of Thessaly and Central Greece, the Pineus and Erochius Potamus, rise in the Pindus Mountains and flow eastward. Several smaller rivers flow westward from the Pindus Mountains to the Ionian Sea. These rivers of the Peloponnesus flow outward to the coast from the central mountains. 
Much of the surface water in Greece disappears down cracks in the large areas of limestone rocks where they form underground river systems. There are few lakes of any size, the largest being Lake Tricondia in Western Greece, which is pictured here. In general, the nature of the land and the dry summers lead to water shortages in many areas. The Cornish Canal is 3.7 miles long and shortens the voyage across the isthmus of Corneas by 202 miles. Greece is known to possess one of the largest merchant fleets in the world. The harbor of Piraeus in Athens is the largest container port in Greece. There are 18 UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Greece. Among the most well-known monuments of ancient Greece are the Acropolis in Athens and its Parthenon Temple, the Sanctuary of Delphi, the ruins of the Olympic Stadium in Olympia, and the Shrine and Sanctuary of Asclepius at Epidurus. Plant life in Greece is very rich with many different species. Most are typically Mediterranean, such as evergreen oak, cypress, and pine, and shrubs such as juniper, myrtle, and oleander. The northern mountains have forests of trees that lose their leaves seasonally, such as oak, chestnut, ash, and beech. Coniferous, which are cone-bearing trees, mainly fir and pine, are also found on the upper slopes in Greece. Human activity has greatly affected the plant life of Greece, and much of the original forest has vanished. About 20% of the area of the country is at present forested. Where goats and other livestock have grazed, the forests have been replaced by areas of a certain type of shrub known as scrub and undergrowth known as maquis. Greece is home to about 6,000 species of wildflowers, of which some 600 are native to the country. In the mountain forests of central Greece, known bears, wolves, wildcats, martens, wild boars, lynx, and deer can be found. In the south, in the coastline, the coastal areas, Mediterranean, Mediterranean animals such as the jackal, wild goat, and porcupine are common. Greece has a variety of birds, including the heron, stork, and pelican. Reptiles include snakes, lizards, and turtles. The subtropical climate encourages a variety of insects, of which the most harmful are the mosquito, which transmits malaria, and the sandfly which carries sandfly fever. Did you know, for the most part, the cats that you see wandering around Greece are usually strays. They tend to behave in similar ways as other wild cats and tend to mark out a territory that they call their own. In the case of the cats you see, the neighborhood, restaurant, villa, beach, etc., where you see them is known to be their territory. Since there are no harsh winters in Greece, this makes it easy for cats to survive. In certain parts of Greece, they are able to easily find food, shelter, and water, and they are often helped by the kindness of humans. Kalamera means good day in Greek. The Greek language has the longest history of any of the Indo-European languages and written records date back about 3,500 years ago. The Greek alphabet has 24 letters, which is pictured here to your right. Over 15 million people in the world speak Greek now. These speakers mostly live in Greece and Cyprus. There are also people in other countries around the world who speak the language. This is largely because People left Greece and immigrated, meaning they moved to other countries. Countries like the United States and Australia have a large Greek diaspora. The Greeks made important contributions to philosophy, mathematics, astronomy, and medicine. Literature and theater was an important aspect of Greek culture and influenced modern drama. The Greeks were known for their sophisticated sculpture and architecture. Greek culture influenced the Roman Empire and many other civilizations, and it contributes to influence modern cultures today. 
Customs and traditions in Greece and the Greek islands are an important aspect of the Greek culture. Most of the traditions and festivals still celebrated today are religious. The Greeks are very superstitious and believe a lot in religion, but also in supernatural or paranormal phenomenon. Traditions and superstitions vary from island to island, from villages to villages, and from religion or from region to region. It is true that the tradition of name days exists in many European countries, but in Greece, these name days are strongly respected and celebrated. For many Greeks, the name day celebration is actually more important than someone's birthday, especially for adults, and it is customary to call and congratulate someone on their name day. The person celebrating often treats his or her guests to either an open house or a drink at a taverna, which is just a bar. Kalonina, which means good month, is a traditional greeting you will hear on the first day of the month. Important to Greek culture, the first day of the month symbolizes a new beginning. Greeks greet each other to wish good things for the month ahead. Perhaps one of the most well-known superstitions that Greece shares with Turkey as well as other places, is the belief that the evil eye is a curse cast by an envious or jealous person. To protect yourself against it, Greeks believe you must wear this charm. This is what the famous blue pieces of glass with an eye printed on it are for. If you've seen My Big Fat Greek Wedding, you are familiar with this. Greeks believe spitting chases the devil and evil away. Greeks do not actually spit, but will say, fatu, 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 three times, no less. It is common to spit when someone mentions a bad piece of news or a death, when someone comments on the beauty or health of someone, or even when complimenting a baby or a child so that the compliment doesn't give the person the evil eye. In Greece, some names are very common. This comes from an ancient tradition that was intended to ensure the continuation of a name. The firstborn is named after a grandparent, if it is a boy, he takes the name of his paternal grandfather, and if it is a girl, she takes the name of the maternal grandmother. It is also common that the first child is named after the father's parents, regardless of whether it is a boy or a girl. It is not uncommon to find cousins with the same name, though they can be adapted or nicknamed differently to avoid confusion. In recent years, many parents have chosen not to follow this tradition, or instead use the grandparent's name as a middle name. Another interesting fact is that a child doesn't have a name until he or she is baptized. Until then, the baby is simply called baby. All year round, saints days are celebrated in chapels and churches, mostly in rural settings, although it is possible to see them in bigger cities. On this day, a festival is organized after a mass, the festival includes free food and drink, traditional music and dancing until the next morning. And on islands, these festivals can sometimes be accompanied by processions and marching bands. Another tradition Greeks are famous for is the smashing of plates. While the origins of this practice are obscure and unclear, it is associated with the expression of joy and happiness, or to show appreciation for the music being played at a party. This tradition was banned in 1969 and replaced in live music clubs by throwing flowers at the feet of the singer or at each other. You may still see some plate smashing in private celebrations, although plaster plates are more likely to be used. Traditionally, Greeks didn't decorate with a Christmas tree, but a Christmas boat. It was only in 1833 when Bavarian King Odo celebrated his first Christmas on the throne of Greece, that the Christmas tree tradition was introduced to the country. As a symbol of the seafaring nation, the boat was decorated in honor of the sailors returning home to their families around Christmas time. Nowadays, the tradition is making a comeback, not only in the islands, but also on the mainland. Easter, not Christmas, is the most important religious celebration for Greeks from Lent and even Carnival or Apocrys, I hope I'm saying that right, to Easter, the Greek calendar is filled with traditions and rituals that many Greeks still observe. 
Kicking things off, the Thursday of the second week of Carnival is known as Burnt Thursday. Greeks traditionally get together and grill meat on this day. In Athens, you can even see staff at taverns grilling in the streets. The whole of Holy Week is also full of traditions with the dyeing of eggs in red to symbolize the sacrifice of Christ, the decoration of the tomb of Christ with flowers and many other processions. The night of Holy Saturday is the peak of celebrations with a special ceremony that most of the Greeks attend. And on Easter Sunday itself, families enjoy a traditional Easter lunch, which may last well into the late afternoon with roasted lamb on a pit and many other delicious dishes. My favorite slides. So speaking of food, Greek cuisine is characteristic of the healthy Mediterranean diet and full of aroma. Seriously, when I was in Greece, you can just smell it walking down the streets. Fresh fruit and vegetables and seafood are found in most dishes. Spices such as oregano, thyme, mint, or rosemary are added to most Greek dishes. And olive oil is used in most dishes or for dipping bread. Greek cuisine incorporates fresh ingredients into a variety of local dishes such as masuka, which is a layered dish with eggplants or brinjals, and potatoes and creamy sauce which is pictured to your left. Fasolata is a Greek Mediterranean or Cypriot soup of dry white beans, olive oil, and vegetables, which is pictured in the middle. Spinacopita is a phyllo pastry dish with a spinach and feta filling, which is pictured right here. To this village salad, pictured to your left, is what we all know all over the world as Greek salad made with plenty of tomatoes, cucumbers, olives, and feta cheese, usually eaten with pita, I mean bread, not pita. Feta cheese, which is a white soft cheese made from goat's milk, and tzatziki, which is my favorite Greek or Mediterranean dish, which is dip or thick sauce made with Greek yogurt, cucumbers, garlic, olive oil, and spices. Skewers of marinated meat, usually eaten as fast food. Pasticia, which is a pasta dish with minced meats and white sauce, similar to the Italian lasagna. Dolmades, which are little parcels of rice that have been mixed with vegetables and spices and that are wrapped in vines of leaves, usually grapevines. Thank you so much for traveling to Greece with me today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And in the comment section, tell me if you've ever been to Greece or what your favorite Greek food is. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you always know when we release a video so you're able to comment so you can be entered into a weekly drawing for a special fun prize. And I will see you all next week for another World Traveler Wednesday. And Spanakoputa. Gonna to <laughs> Greek is really hard if you haven't caught and picked up on that. Spanakoputa. Spanakopuda. We're gonna go with that. Which is a phyllo pastry dish with a with. <sighs> Let's try this again. Chorkipolita salata. This village salad is what we all know all over the world as Greek salad because it's much easier to pronounce to us who don't know Greek.